Welcome back to a brand new edition of Views from the Booth. I'm your host, Reed Becker, and joining to me, me today, he is a contributor to fanside.com, is a newly play-by-play -play announcer for the Brockton Rocks this summer, as Brett Shavs. Brett, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, Reed. Happy to be here. Now, the big news in the NHL today, and really here in the New York area for where I am, the New York Rangers, after the mess that Dolan spewed on with firing the front office, as expected, I would think, is they officially fired David Quinn as their head coach. Um, this was a move that, for me, once they cleaned the house, while he probably might have not fully deserved it, although if you ask other Ranger fans, he was, they were very, there, there was a lot of criticism throughout the season about how he, uh, there, were, there was always a constant lack of consistency with the team overall. And while I don't think it was probably appropriate timing to do this, once the front office went, it was kind of writing on the wall for me. Yeah, I mean, if you take a look at it, just in the grand scheme of things, if you're going to knock down the majority of the cards in the front office, why not knock down all of them? I mean, it, considering that you have a new, brand new set of personnel coming in to run the organization, it makes sense to bring in the head coach that they see fit. Obviously, like you said, I'm not particularly a fan of the timing of, of David Quinn's firing. I thought that he deserved maybe one, two seasons max, depending on how the production went within the team. Um, but I think based on the situation and them completely cleaning out front office management, whatever you want to call it, I think, I think it might have been necessary considering there might have been some internal disputes between if David Quinn were to stay and the new management. Right. Well, I wouldn't have even fired, honestly, the whole front office. I think once uh, they did the whole front office shakeup, which I think was mainly done by Sather getting into Dolan's ear uh, in the front office, once that kind of happened due to the lack of the celebration that Dolan saw of not being up to par of the winning uh, standards in New York for what he sees as appropriate, as you were saying, yeah, does it make sense that uh, Quinn would be gone shortly after, which is exactly what happened today. So looking ahead forward now with the list of candidates, though, um, so I'll just quickly say, as of what's being reported right now, they have Mike Babcock, John Tortorella, Patrick Roy, Ra, I don't know. Yep, Patrick Ra. Ra, and Rick Touche and Rod Armour. So I'll just say right off the bat, I do not want Tortorella back with the Rangers, although I have a feeling after also just listening to some local sports talk radio here in New York, that Dolan's probably going to be a huge fan of bringing Tortorella back because of his relationship with their first tenure in New York and having gone to the Eastern Conference Finals back in 2012. Um, but for me, it doesn't make sense. You're going to bring in someone, they had success, but it's kind of like when you sign a guy to a long-term contract, you know it towards the end of the year of his contract, it's going to be garbage. And mm. which is what happened with the Rangers when he was first here, he kind of gets on players' nerves towards the end. And, oh, by the way, I'm sure <laughs> New York media is not going to be a fan of Torrella coming in with all his attitude. And he always wants confrontation with his team. There's always something going on with his teams. And, when he had the teams uh, in his first stint here in New York, his main MO, you could say, was having guys block shots constantly, which really wound up roughing them up with their health and availability. I think the biggest thing, like you said, is Tortorella's attitude and his morale towards his organizations, his teams. We saw, obviously, in his first stint with New York, like you just mentioned, has guys blocking shots, and then eventually that'll lead to confrontations, you know, bad disputes, and then obviously you have a pretty messed up organization internally. And then we see him go to Columbus, obviously the huge dispute with Patrick Line. That didn't turn out well, and now he's out of Columbus. So in my eyes, bringing him into the big media market of New York is not a good idea at all, especially considering his reputation and the situation for the Rangers right now. It's not a good idea. 
He's also a very boomer bust coach, like you mentioned as well. He can either have a lot of success, like he had back in the day when he took him to the Eastern Conference Finals, or he cannot do anything at all, like he did in Columbus. Columbus wasn't really successful. In well, the they time. did get to the they they upset the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round in what was forever. They but did, but compared to what he did with the Rangers, it's not it's not the same sort of success. Like, yes, he did make the playoffs with the Blue Jackets, but didn't go as far as he like he would have hoped. But I just don't think, like you said, it's a good idea as well. I don't think it's a good idea, but I, what I will say is that considering where they are right now, because he's kind of a win type of now coach, it would not surprise me if they brought him back. Not that I would agree with it, but the only other one that, I mean, Mike Babcock, after what happened in Toronto, I don't think they're going to go that route. No. With, uh, I think Babcock's a great coach, but what, he, what happened in Toronto is, you know, it can't happen. So I don't think he's made for the New York spotlight either. Right. And then the only other one, I mean, Rod Armour in Carolina, but it sounds very likely uh, he's staying in Carolina. But the one, here's the one I want to ask about. How about uh, the Gerald, yeah, Gerard Gallant. Uh, yeah, yeah Gallant. Gallant, right. So in Vegas, having brought somebody, an expansion team really, in their first year in the league, to the Stanley Cup Finals, for a team that's going in that mode, in that windmill mode, to me that would be somebody that is worth a look. No, I think Gerard Gallant's definitely worth a look. Don't get me wrong. I write for the Vegas Golden Knights for Fan Sided, so I do follow. I used to follow Gallant when he was manager. Um, I think he's a great coach. Um, he definitely brings that that win now mentality that sort of fire that you're looking for to ignite an offense that's been struggling for a long time. The only thing I will say about him is he's very inconsistent with his teams. You take a look at his past back with Florida. They did not have the success that, you know, they nearly are seeing now. And this is their first time going to the playoffs in years. So you take a look at the inconsistency there and then his inconsistency towards the end of his time with Vegas, Vegas. Yes. Had the great first season, but then the second and third seasons, which he was a part of, he was a part of halfway through the third season, didn't really do much. I mean, they lost in the first round to, I believe it was San Jose after that big major penalty. And then they've lost in the Western Conference Finals with Pete DeBoer after he took over. And Gerard Gallant didn't really set them up to do much there either. Um, so I think it's worth a look to maybe have him start fresh with the Rangers as far as him being there long-term, it's still a big question. So then let me just get this straight, because if, if we're looking at the rest of the candidates, I mean, Rick Touche, I mean, that looking at his resume, that doesn't seem like somebody that the Rangers are going to go after. So, yeah. In that, yeah. No, go ahead. In that case then, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you agree then, would Tortorella be the only legitimate candidate then? You have Tortorella, you have Wa. I think Wa could be interesting considering that you right, have although, a young right. But the only Go thing Wa is that he's currently the general manager in the CMJHL. Would that be something that they would have to jump through hoops to get through compensation with that? They would have to jump through hoops, but if he does come to the Rangers, this is just a hypothetical, it could be good for their young goaltending staff. You know, you have three guys right now. Let me pull them up right now in uh, Shesterkin, uh, sure. yep. Georgiev, and then Kincaid. All young guys, all of them. And from what I understand, they have promising talent. So if you're going to bring in a Hall of Fame goaltender like Patrick Waugh, possibly the greatest goaltender to ever play hockey, to mentor them, it wouldn't be such a bad thing. For the rest of the team, I don't know. But for goaltending, it could be very beneficial. Goaltending is a very – once Lundqvist went out, I mean, Shesterkin was, to me, very inconsistent this past season. I mean, goaltending is definitely going to have to be something they're going to have to fix up. I mean, and the other players that they had, like Cap Kako and Strom, and I mean, Quinn was already developing them up the up the way, and so I mean, they're kind of already set there. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only I guess so. So you're so you're, you're between Tortorella and why you're saying? I would say. If you want to jump through the hoops and make the extra mile, Raw wouldn't be a bad option. I don't think Tortorella's re like an ideal candidate, but he understands how the Rangers work. 
He understands the New York media. If you want to bring him in, go ahead. My suggestion, though, realistically, is hire someone internally. Internally, like, like an assistant coach that they oh, they're have. Not doing, they're, they're not doing that. They're going all no. They you want never know they want an experienced coach that's that's gonna be with win now mentality. That I, I, I can't, Dolan's definitely not gonna do that. The only one I'll leave it with this that has been mentioned here in New York area, although he doesn't have any experience, which is what they're looking for. Well, Mark Messier, somebody that has been around hockey. I don't think they're going to do it, but someone that's been around hockey for a long time, uh, Rangers legend, although I guess to Dolan, Ranger legends don't mean anything after what he did with Davidson, but um, I don't see them going that route. And he said he's available. He wants to come back, but I don't think they're going that route, right? No, I don't think so either. Just going back really quick, I know it's not a, a ideal. If they do go internally, I don't know if Dolan wants to. Look what the Bruins did a few years ago with Cassidy. No one saw Bruce Cassidy being the next head coach of the Boston Bruins. Wait, hold on. I just want to say one thing. You're talking because internally, he, the Rangers got rid of basically all their assistants except for the goaltending coach, if I got that correctly, in the firing with Quinn. So in that case, they're pretty much going to the open market, I would think. Let's take a look. The goaltending coach. You are right. Okay. Yeah, so Ben Oliver. Assistant coaches, uh, David Oliver and Jacques Martin and Greg Brown. So if they really are cleaning the entire house, then yes, you are right. They're going all out for an experience, you know, next, to next head coach who understands what it means to win now. So if they weren't going that route, maybe you consider hiring one of those three, but obviously that's not the case. So could you if see, I, yeah, no, continue. no, go ahead. No, finish it up first. No, I was just going to say, if you want to go Tortorella, go Tortorella, but I think you should definitely pick someone who doesn't have that strong of a personality. Well, that's a tough, <laughs> it's, it's a tough thing in a New York market because you never know what you're going to get, but I, if I just have to one. guess, I'll just leave it with this. If I have to guess, I don't think they should do it, but if I have to guess, knowing Dolan, what he does with the Knicks and the Rangers, he's going to go based on relationships and win now. And I think Tortorella is probably going to be his guy. I hope not, but I think that's what they're going to go with. Mm -hmm. I just want to leave this here, though. Going into the offseason for the Rangers, Jack Eichel in Buffalo. Jack Eichel in Buffalo, right? That's what I have yep. correctly. Yep. That's the guy that a lot have been rumors here in New York. Uh, if they're going all in with uh, Winnow mentality, you could say he's been a big guy that you could be has been rumored to come to the Garden. Could you see them going all in this quickly? I mean, this quickly as uh, acceleration process with what Dolan's seeing. Quite honestly, with what they it was about three years after they sent the letter out to the fans in the rebuilding process. To me, this is a little too soon. But could you see them going all in for Eichel? I think it's also a little too premature, um, especially considering your situation with goaltending. You need to develop that first, make sure you have a strong core in the crease to make sure your defense can, you know, do their job in development as well. Um, you have Panarin already with Kapo Kako. You have Strom. You have Savannah Jad leading your, you're leading your team right now as the captain. I think it's a little and too Lafreniere. premature. Because, what's that? And Lafreniere from the first pick. And Lafreniere, yes, the former number one pick. Um, I think if you're going to go after Eichel, it's going to take a lot. I don't, I don't think Buffalo is going to put a cheap price tag on him like they did with Taylor Hall. I think it's going to require maybe a first-round pick and some consistent young talent. Um, but if they do, then they're really going to have to step up the pace and pick a head coach that understands how to work a win-now team. And I think that's kind of the road they're going. So we'll have a lot still to come as the summer – comes our way with the Rangers and free agency once that gets underway. I'm not sure. But uh, we have a lot still coming up time until that comes our way with free agency. But that's all the time we have for today. For Brett Shobbs, I'm your host, Reed Becker, and we'll see you next time here on Views from the Booth. <laughs>